Welcome to my series on how to do better business in the new kindness economy. Sponsored by Dell Technologies, I'm Mary Portless and across six episodes, I'll be speaking with a mix of small business owners, some who are part of the Dell Women's Entrepreneur Network, Dwen, but all are on the journey of making their business better. And we'll be revealing the questions that are keeping us up at night, but we'll also be sharing solutions for all businesses, whether you're big or small. In this episode, I want to look at why it's so important to connect with Gen Z. Yes, that wonderful generation. God, I wish I was born into them. But anyway, that's not the point here. How do you go about that? How do you figure out to engage with the next generation? It's always been a challenge. It's not a new issue, but this one, this generation is particularly different. And if there's any generation that embodies the kindness economy, it's them. How do you do it? Well, the first thing is to remember, we're all humans, the same fundamental human needs run through us all, our wants, desires. They run through all our veins, whether that's self-expression, whether that's freedom, whether that's a sense of belonging or love. Yeah, another word that's not used in business often. But of course, the youth generation of every era carries its own unique tensions, challenges, communications, innovations, discoveries, new ways of living. So how do we connect with this Generation Z? A gen that's always faced some sort of global crisis. A generation, because of that, who want to now rethink the rules because they have so little to lose. Like the millennials, they're often worse off than their parents. They're a generation who feel the weight of creating a better world on their shoulders, bonding deeply over shared beliefs and values and choosing often, and often demanding, brands who share the same. Today, I'm here with Ruth Rogers and we'll be talking about how to connect with Gen Z. Ruth is the founder of The Canvas, a not-for-profit social enterprise that supports and enables the launch of positive ideas that will improve the lives of others. It's a cafe, creative venue and community hub. So Ruth, can you tell me a little bit more about your company? The Canvas unites people with space and support to solve local problems and make life better for everyone around us. And what that means in real life is we're a vegan cafe, community hub and creative space just off Brick Lane in East London. So what's your, what's your big question? What is, it, what is it that you want to know? What is it that you want to know that will make your business better? So we, we are, I think, supporting Gen Z because Gen Z are a generation of activists and we are basically a magnet for change makers and positivity pioneers. Um, we live by our values, we are generous, we are compassionate, we are kind, but how does a business stay afloat, maintaining a genuine voice as part of our brand values, but how do we stay afloat post-pandemic without feeling like we're, we're, we're talking with two voices? So what are the two voices? So the voice of a hospitality business going, we absolutely must run a tight ship, profit margins, upselling, those sorts of things that you have to do. We pay rent, we pay rates, we pay, we pay wages. But maintaining the other voice, which is profit with purpose business and generosity and supporting vulnerable people, how, how do you kind of turn those two voices into one authentic right. voice? Let me understand where the two voices are. Are you saying that the people that you've got working there, the Gen Zs, don't understand that you need to make money in order to survive, in order to create a business that keeps going? And that you want to grow, you want to grow, you yes. want to put this across the country. We do. Is that the issue? Um, I think the issue, the issue is that people have a certain expectation of a profit with purpose business. They expect you to... Customers you're talking about or people that work with you? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, both. Okay. I think they so expect how you to, do you say every to people, single box. I have purpose, but I want to make money. Yeah. Right. Quite simply, because if I don't make money, I'm not going to have a purpose. Yeah. Right. Okay. So why are you fanning around with words on that and worrying about saying that to them? Does that, is, there, is there a worry in you on that? Does it, is it, oh, if I sound like I want to make money here, am I going to go against my purpose? I think so. I think, you know, and I, I have, I feel like I'm, I, I know the research. I, I know the, 
I know what underpins what you're trying to say. And yet when I come to the cold face and go, Ugh, I, I'm, I'm always a bit scared to sound like I'm pushing for profit. It's, this, is, this is the age old question, you know, and how do we create profitable businesses that are thriving and that I can use part of that resource to give back to community. That's what you want to do. But if I'm not profitable and I'm not thriving, I am not going to be able to do that, right? So first of all, you and yourself have to go, I'm doing something here that's making a difference yeah. and I need money to make it happen. Secondly, you need to go out there really powerfully with this message, internally and externally. And you can use language that doesn't say, I need to have a big bloody profit. You know, it's about numbers. What did you call upselling? Don't use that word. I mean, it just, it's, 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 yeah, it's you know, icky. Think of the words that you use that says, okay, here we are. We have to thrive. Thrive is a beautiful word. We have to thrive. And in order to thrive, we need to make and be very transparent about the money. These are the numbers that we need to get to. So first of all, have that with your team. I would be also putting your vision much clearer onto your windows, onto everything you do. I will be using the people that you work with or your team of people. How many staff do you have? Tw uh, 12. That's fairly significant, right? How do they tell people? How do they connect with people when they come into the shop? Well, they tell people about the Pay It Forward board. Yeah. We've got... We've got menus saying our credentials, so all of our suppliers are social enterprise when possible and, lo and local when possible. Mm -hmm. So we do really, we're careful about how we present that. I think we could be better of, of having the script that doesn't feel like a script. Yes. So that when people walk in, they realize we are so much more than a cafe. Everything we do is around uniting people to create positive social change. See, the way you talk about it's wonderfully. So I think you do need to create that script. And the other thing I'd be looking at is really speaking with these Gen Zs and I know you, 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 and actually getting ideas from them just saying to them, do you do that do you sit with them saying right I want let's look at two ideas that we could use this month that will create a more vibrant space that we will actually sell more within do you do you use them for that no not at the moment well you've got your soil association or whatever you called it <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my daughter works in the, the food farming and country So you've got your, your soil hub. You should have a hub for your business. Mm. It's not all in your head. It needs to share it. So I think really doing stuff that looks at how the business can thrive, being deeply transparent with your numbers, talking to your team and actually telling them that if we thrive, what this does, it unlocks everything in terms of you guys, in your terms of your training, in terms of staff benefits, that's how we do it. A rising tide lifts all boats. What I've found is that you say, you know, I will be giving away free coffee and free cake all afternoon on Thursday, come to the hub and talk to me, and no one turns up. I, I've, I guess I've become quite uh, resigned in thinking that when I try and organise something to kind of engage people, it, it never works. So I, I've gone a bit glum about it and thought, well, I don't seem to have that key to unlock the actual, the people to come in through the door and talk to me. I have tried, but people don't seem to come. And the team of people that work with you, mm. they're on your payroll? Yes. Yes. Are there a team of people who aren't on your payroll who you could use as your ambassadors that will create this community and bring in people with them? Not currently, no. That's what I do. I would find some really great people in the community who become your ambassadors and get them to invite three friends and commit to that yeah. and start from there. Because those people then, you're looking them in the eyes, you get to know them and say, I, this is really important to me. Will you be part of this yeah. with me? I'm going to give you this in return. And probably they won't in the end even want the free coffee or whatever, but they want to be part of something that will make a difference to their community. So the, 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 one, the five people who bring in three friends each, that's, that's three, five threes. Five threes, look at this. <laughs> fifteen, 15. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> fifteen. From that fifteen, you then go off, they bring in another three each. Okay. It, you start to grow and connect with them, get to know them, and then you move. And then create stuff that they are able to take home with them or that they can talk about and that they can share the philosophies that you talk about. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking about and we, uh, is, is there any way that you can get investment 
from local businesses. So, for example, if you've got one of the big agencies, so we, we know around the corner from you, yeah. you go in, you see the CEO and you say, can you just buy your coffees from us? This will make this difference to us. We yeah, do it's it a here. Really good idea. It's a great idea. We do yeah. it here. So anybody comes in, as much as I love Pret, and with a Pret coffee, we go, oh, we have a thing with our knockbox local. We will commit that we are going to buy. You imagine how many team that would be? That's a, that's a brilliant idea. Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty good at ideas that. sometimes. Oh, that's, a, that's a fantastic yeah. idea. Yeah. That, that is actually something that I can do tomorrow. Win-win. Yeah, win-win. Do it. That's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> if what we've talked about has piqued your interest, well, the team here, along with myself at Porters, have written an in-depth report that really delves into all of this stuff in much more detail. It's full of some fantastic examples because we've looked at progressive businesses across the globe and analysed what is it they're doing? What is it those businesses are doing to get it right? Thought-provoking what-ifs to stretch your creative and commercial thinking. Plus, we've added a library of extra resources to learn from. So click on the link in the description or go to weareportas.com to download a copy. Learn from it. Take it into your heart and then go out into the world with it. Now... Go forth and thrive in the new kindness economy. On the next episode, I'm going to be talking about the all-important topic and ever-growing category, well-being.